Well, welcome back to Return of Praise this week. I'm Mike Moulton, the Beulah Campus Pastor. It's so good to be here with you and your family. I hope that this week as we go through the Return to Praise, as you are studying with you and your group and your family, I really hope that these uh, parts where you get to indulge in these studies that we've taken the time to place an emphasis on, that your relationship with God, your relationship with the church would continue to grow and that you and your family would continue to be a part and dive deeper into God's word and God's relationship with you and the entire body. Well, listen, this week we're going to talk about confession. And it's so great when we get to know as believers that we can come to our God, our heavenly father and say, Lord, I confess dot, dot, dot. And I need help with everything because I cannot do it myself. So let's begin. As we talked and as you're going through your study before, we want to talk and dive in right to Romans 10. We're going to look at verses 5 through 17. And it says this, Moses writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down or who will descend into the deep. That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified and is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is the Lord of all richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. But I ask you, did they not hear? Of course they did. Well, we have to understand this. What this is saying right here is that we as believers have to confess to God and profess that he is our savior. See, and it starts all in the beginning with confession. We cannot come into a right relationship with God without first confessing who we are. Romans says that we are all sinners and we all will fall short of the glory of God. But those who come and profess his name will be saved forevermore. And so it is our duty as Christians to speak with non-believers and those are who are even believers as well to say the good news is this that God sent his one and only son for us and that if we profess who he is and believe in our hearts and confess that we are sinners to him we will be saved it's that confession of where our relationship our eternal life starts see most of us think that when we confess we're giving it over but we still hold on to some of the guilt and we still hold on to some of what we need uh, as a barrier that to prevent us from getting to God, we hold on to that. And it's very difficult for God to work in our lives unless we confess what is going on in our lives and also give it over to him fully. So we're gonna continue on. I want us to know that sin is the very nature of who we are born into as humans. It happened at the fall in the garden in Genesis. It speaks clearly on that, that through that, that once man fell into sin, we are now born into that as who we are today. But we have an author, we have a salvation way towards God that through his son, we can have eternal life. And so we place our trust and faith in the author of our lives, that though we were born into sin and though we were yet still sinners, God loved us and he saved us through his son, Jesus Christ. So we've got to know that when we confess our sins, that what separates us from God is our sin and that no matter what, each and every person in this world will sin. You will sin, I will sin, and it will happen forevermore. 
But the thing about this is we don't have to be stuck within our sin. We can continue to confess and give it over to God and allow for him to work through our sin and work with us as long as we confess it to God. It's that confession, that part of who we are with God that says, I need to confess this in order for God to work in my life. See, if we hold on to these anchors in life, if we take our eyes off of who Jesus is and where he wants to take us, we will completely miss the path that God wants us to take us. So we've got to confess first. But if we don't confess our sins, there is absolutely no way in which we can see God's blessings. And I'm not talking something tangible. I'm not talking something monetarily. I'm not talking something that we can receive as objectively. What I'm talking about is it's that confession that we are released from, that we are freed from that sin nature, that barrier in which is holding our, our, us back from our relationship with God. The other part of confession is it does this that you can confess to God and give him all of your transgressions, iniquities, and, and, and things that happen in your life, the trials and tribulations that you're struggling with, the anxiety and worries that you're walking through. And when you do that, God will bless you through that. And I'm not talking just your personal life because now the weight is lifted, but I'm talking about the very instance where now you have a clearer picture of where God wants you to go. See, God wants us to come to him and God's word says that if we draw close to him first, he'll draw close to us. And when we do that, we can allow for God's blessings to work in our lives. And then that very instance of what we've walked through, those trials and tribulations, as soon as we've confessed them, Lord, I can't do it. But with everything in you and my belief, I'm giving it over to you. Lord, help me work through this. And so it will happen at that instance once you release that to God. And then you can be a blessing to others and you can work through it with others. You can start to see a clearer picture. See, our testimonies aren't just for us. They're for others to experience God as well. And once you allow God to continue to work in your life through confession, it's that very moment that you can say, Lord, I'm doing this for you. I'm not doing this for me, but for you, Lord, to help build your kingdom. We're all gonna have doubts and fears, but through this, we can go ahead and allow God to work in our lives. And that once we confess through all this, there's a greater bit on the end of where we get to see this, the confession of praise. See, as you pray for things, as you continue to walk through things, I want you to know this, that God will bless you. And then through that, we can't forget that in all circumstances, we have to give thanks, both good and bad, both trial and triumph. We have to allow God to work in our lives. And then once we do that, we have to also know that it's not just through the, the hard times that we confess, but through the great times as well. And that when we confess to God, that we say, God, I'm so grateful you allowed this to happen in my life. I was able to adopt. I was able to get that promotion at work. My marriage is restored. I'm a better husband. I'm a better father. I'm a better coworker. You want to know that when we can have these trials and they turn into triumph, that we still have to know that God reigns true through that time as well, through the valley and on the mountaintop, that we have to give those confessions of both trials and triumph. And through that, we will get to know God on a deeper level, on a more personal level, and that we will understand who he is and the plan that he has for us, and that through his will, he wants us to prosper. He does. And I want you to know that through his prospering in us, it allows for others to prosper as well too. We can't hold on to the good things that God has done. We can't hold on to the things that will hold us back from God doing these good things as well. So I pray that through this week, that you will continue to allow God to work in your life through confession that no matter the circumstance, that you would allow God to say, hey, I love you and I want you to be a part of this relationship. But we've got to know this, that it's a heart posture. And when our hearts are hardened and that we don't allow God to work in our heart, we take and rob God of blessing us because we're essentially having pride in our life. And we say, Lord, I'm bigger than you. I can work through this. When truthfully, we've got to allow God to work through our confession. So it starts there, family. It starts with the, Lord, I am confessing whatever it is. And that through that, we can say, God, you are a good God. And the good news is that you've sent your one and only son 
that through his death, burial, and resurrection, I can have that new life. And so I pray that you know that when you confess at the very beginning of your walk with him, that you get right back to who your first love was with him. And that through that, you can know that you've experienced so much triumph, you've experienced so much greatness, and that you can allow for him to continue to work in your life. And so through this week, as you continue to study, as you are working through this in not only your groups, but in and through your prayer time each and every morning, that in and through your walk daily with him, that you would say, God, I'm handing this over to you today. God, work in my life. I confess that I'm a sinner. I confess to you that I need you. And that through that, Lord, please bless me. Please lead me. Please guide me. And I promise you this, family that you will know him on a deeper level and that you will continue to see his blessings for not only you, but your family, your coworkers, and those all around you. You've got to come to love God through it all. And then you got to love God through others. And But you can't love others without loving yourself and knowing who God is. So take a look in the mirror this week. Get back to your first love. Confess to God both the good and the bad and allow him to work in your life. And I'm excited to see what God can do for you throughout this entire study of Return to Praise. We just want to say we love you. We thank you. We're here for you as a pastoral staff. And we cannot wait to see what God does for you throughout this study. Thank you.